Hi, it's Devora. This is my fourth or my fifth time doing this. And I'm having difficulty because I'm just talking to myself. So I hope that this is helpful for those of you who are listening to the recording. I'm going to share my screen. And let's start by noticing the breath and grounding ourselves. Noticing if you're having a busy mind and you can ask that busy mind to relax a little bit. And if the mind can't, then just notice the breath as an anchor. And when your mind takes over, then just say, please let me get back to my breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. You might want to notice if you have any, any aches or pains or tightness anywhere, perhaps tightness in the shoulders or clenching in the jaw. Perhaps a heaviness in the chest. And the mind might wander. And you can come back to the breathing and noticing body sensations. And we can try a practice which is helpful when someone is very agitated, whether physically agitated or emotionally anxious or a busy brain. I invite you to breathe in. And when you breathe out, I invite you to send that breath out through your left hand. When you breathe in, send that breath to fill your left arm. And when you breathe out, send it out through the fingers of your left arm. Breathing in, sending that energy of the breath into your left arm, breathing out, sending it out through your fingers. Let's continue that for a minute or so. Breathing in, sending that energy into your left arm and breathing out, sending it out through your fingers. And let's switch over to the right arm, breathing in and sending that energy of the breath into your right arm, breathing out, sending it out through your right hand and their fingers in your right hand. Breathing in, sending that energy into your right arm, Breathing out and sending that energy out through your hand and your fingers of your right arm. Let's continue that for a minute or so. Mm 
and you may find your mind wandering. You may find a part saying, oh my gosh, this is so boring, this is dumb. That's okay. We'll just notice those as parts and invite those parts to just relax. And maybe join the meditation or find a couch to lay down on. One more time, breathing in, sending energy to the right arm. And breathing out, sending it out through the hand of the right arm and out through the fingers. And let's breathe in energy into your torso, straightening the spine, and then breathing out and sending that energy out through the tailbone. Breathing in. Sending that energy into your torso, breathing out, sending it out, down your spine and out through your tailbone. Do that for another couple of breaths. And if you feel any aches or pains or emotions or thoughts, that's okay. Just invite those aches or pains or thoughts to join the meditation or to relax a little bit. And if they can't relax, that's also okay. We'll just be curious and notice. Now let's move to the left leg, sending the energy into your left leg and out through your toes of your left foot. Straightening the spine when you breathe in and sending that energy out with the exhale down through the left foot. Let's move to the right foot, the right leg, breathing in. Sending the energy into your right leg and then sending it out down your leg and out your right foot. Again, breathing in, sending that energy into your right leg and breathing out, sending it out down your leg and out through your right foot. We'll do that for a few more breaths. And now let's breathe in and send that energy throughout your body. And then send with the exhale, expel it out through your hands and your feet and your tailbone. Do that for a few more breaths.
And let's switch over to the idea of Geula, which according to a mimer that I learned with my study buddies today of Baba Chirebo, the Geula happens in the merit of Torah, Tefillah, and acts of kindness. So let's start with acts of kindness. And let's reflect on reflect on acts of kindness that you received, one incident, one experience of a kindness that you received that really, really helped you in a time when you needed that help. And notice the when you remember that story, if it opens, opens your heart. Where were, you, where were you when that act of kindness was extended to you? It may have been something very simple. Maybe somebody offered you a ride to go somewhere or maybe somebody just smiled at you. Maybe someone was patient with you when you were feeling very, very dysregulated and not yourself. From the news that comes from Israel, there are so many acts of kindness that Hashem can't not see that. The acts of kindness that we're giving to our brothers and sisters the children and the parents and the grandparents. And you reflect on the light and the opening up of Abba Israel that has been revealed. And with that emotion of kindness and Abba Israel, Let's send that out to other people who need it. That emotion of acts of kindness that you received and the, the gratitude and the joy and the light that comes from that. And ask Hashem to put that in that credit card to help us out of our situation here. And let's move to Torah. There were a couple stories that were brought, that the Rebbe brought, that there was no rain. And a famous story is Kone Hamavil, Ramagal, I've been to his cavern in the north, near its spot. And it wasn't raining for a really long time. And he had a way, <clears throat> he was able to dive in for rain and Hashem listened. He's called Honey of the Circle because he would stand and draw a circle around him. And I guess he would say, I'm not moving until you send rain, Hashem. What a concept to daven in such a way. I'm not moving until you bring the Geula, Yeshua, or at least, at least safety and security for our soldiers and our families, particularly in the South and the North. And in the center, and in Yerushalayim, and on the sea, and on everywhere. It 
So that was a little Torah. And tefillah, the famous capital of Tillam that the Alter Rebbe was saying when he was told that he was free, starts with Pada B'Shalom Nafshi. And I saved a printout of this. And I'm not going to read this whole thing. The part that's important is this part that says, redeem my soul with peace from the battle that came upon me. Ki rabim hayu imadi. Rabim hayu imadi. I think the capital is talking about there were so many people opposing the governor Melech. And certainly there were so many people, people opposing the first love at your Rebbe. And this is a test. And we ask Hashem to help us out of this test. And the davening is a battle, a battle within ourselves, with our own limitations. And when we face a battle, when we face a test, we're forced to re rethink. So let's reflect on how the last weeks have been not only an external battle, but also an internal battle. And in what way that battle has forced you to rethink your world. The expression, the new normal, no, it's not normal. It is new, but it's not normal. Asfashon. And as we're breathing in and breathing out, reflecting on how this test, when Hashem is squeezing us, it's squeezing out the potential to go out of our limitations. And it would be so much better if the Mashiach would come and the leadership of the Mashiach would bring us out of this and unite all of us, every one of us with our different ways of seeing and doing things. All the different political parties, all the different communities of customs, all, all those who do what they can with a good heart and an open heart, regardless of what clothing they wear, or as my friend says, Deborah, you know, there are lots of ways of being a Jew. And yes, she brought me back to recognize him, yes, there are lots of ways of being a Jew. And all those ways of being a Jew, all of us are facing this test and being squeezed way past our limitations as we saw them. And the Rebbe in this mimer, he said the worst test was from the inside, from those who go by Jew in name, who were the ones who slandered him. And we see this, those who go by Jew in name, who are standing on the side of those who have committed unspeakable violence against us. And that's the hardest part of the test. But this comes from within. But in this capital, it says, Hashlech 
Al Hashem Yahavcha. Cast your burden on Hashem. He will take care of you. He's going to bear you. He will, he will sustain you. He will never allow a righteous man to falter. And almost every Jews are righteous. Only the ones who have turned their backs on us have gone so far. Everyone else is righteous. And Hashem can carry that burden for us and carry us. And let's experience what it feels like to let Hashem carry that burden. When I look at this picture of the Kotel, what strikes me the most, not just that it's raining and it's Hanukkah in this picture, but the Kotel represents people who come from all walks of life, wearing all kinds of clothing, coming from many other countries, and they all come to talk to Hashem from the depths of their hearts. And the Kotel provides that setting, that safe setting to talk to her soul. And you don't have to work hard there to feel that Hashem is carrying your burden. We're going to stop in a minute or so. Notice your body grounded in the chair, or if you're lying down, grounded on that surface, feeling gravity holding you. Notice if your mind is busy the way it was at the beginning of the practice, or if your mind is more relaxed. Notice if you had difficulty with this focusing or if you were able to follow along, it doesn't really matter, you showed up. You human, we just have to do our best. Kulanu, Kulan Sadikin, all Jews at Sadikin. Whoever would say, all we need to do is polish the buttons. I'd say the buttons are polished. Thank you for joining me. And I hope this has been helpful. Take care.